Hello everyone and welcome to episode 166 of the MTG Goldfish Podcast. It's Seth, probably better known as Saffron Olive, and like usual, I'm joined this week by Richard. What's going on today, Richard? Hey Seth, what's going on? Uh, not much. Ready to finally talk Dominaria. We had this super weird, like, trickle semi-spoiler season over the last week and a half, but today they kicked off spoiler season officially, so we actually have a lot of Dominaria to talk about. So I'm excited for that. Also going to mention a little bit more about Brawl. We kind of forgot it last week and hit on it a little bit during Fish Mail, but we wanted to give it its proper due and talk about Brawl. And then, of course, Fish Mail, like always. So, Richard... Now that we're actually into official Dominaria spoiler season, how are you feeling about what we've seen from the set so far? I think it's pretty cool. I don't know that we've actually seen anything new yet. We, we've seen maybe a handful of new cards, but we got a ton of art. We art of legendary stuff. So we got Planeswalkers, the Weatherlight crew. So, so far I'm feeling the art. Uh, they even released a map of Dominaria. They even released Richard Garfield sagas <laughs> did you actually read the cards some of them are really weird <laughs> but uh yeah i i it looks really good and i'm kind of disappointed in the leak can, can you imagine the level of hype if this was actually all new to us now we're like oh yeah new frames new art and all that but uh we know all the cards <laughs> so uh it, it's still exciting uh, and we get flavor text as well. We we didn't have flavor text before. Maybe we should just do a podcast on flavor text. <laughs> <laughs> but we do have the flavor text for uh, the Weatherlight crew as well. So I'm excited about the Weatherlight crew because the Weatherlight is kind of one of the first things I remember about the magic story. I actually remember uh, that dinky little ship in uh, <laughs> which which set did it? Uh, uh, plane plane shift, I think. Sky ship no, 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 no. It was like way oh. earlier than that because it, there was a set called Weatherlight, right? <laughs> yeah, there was a set called Weatherlight. With Gerard and, and, and crew and stuff on there. And I think they all died. I don't remember what happened. <laughs> but yeah, Weatherlight was one of the first things I remember of, you know, of tangible story importance in Magic. So I'm excited that we're, we're going to get to talk about that today. Yeah, there's so many callbacks. So I feel like they really... I, they nailed the nostalgia pretty well, I think. And I like, I don't know. The spoiler season, it's disappointing because of the leaks, but seeing the art and stuff really changes it. Like, I know for me personally, I read over the leak when it first came out, but I didn't really study it in depth because I just found it really unfun to just read over this, like, text of the card without any art or anything. So they feel, like, kind of new to me, I guess, uh, now that there's art and you actually see them as a magic card rather than just this random line of text on the page. So I'm pretty happy with how the set looks overall. It's got a lot of cool characters and cool frames and cool art, so I'm still pretty hyped for it. I think it's going to be one of the best sets they've made in a long time, and it's going to be interesting. There's a lot of unique stuff that it's going to be really interesting to see how it turns out as far as gameplay with like so many legends and the sagas are really different than any enchantments we've had before so i'm definitely excited to see what it does for standard as well uh as far as cards we got a bunch of mythics that have trickled out some of them are from the leak i think a couple are kind of new ones but we did want to talk about some of the individual cards so richard take it away give us some cards all right we've actually talked about the two planeswalkers of the set. We have Teferi, Hero of Dominaria, and Jaya Ballard. But what we didn't get last time was their art. So <laughs> we got old lady Jaya here. I think our first like grandmother <laughs> planeswalker. Actually, I guess like a lot of planeswalkers are really old. They just don't show it. But Jaya's just like, whatever, I'm showing it. <laughs> I'm gonna be old. <laughs> and then you got Teferi with his staff looking all cool and stuff. Does the art make Jaya Valor any more playable, Seth? Or is she still the I don't know what to do with this card planeswalker? <laughs> I don't I don't think the art makes her more playable. Uh maybe if maybe if you're building like the senior citizen tribal or something for commander then she'll be a staple, but apart from apart from that, I don't know. Uh, this art I mean, I, I'm fine with it, I'm not against it, but it is really weird because we just haven't had a Planeswalker that was uh, as old-looking as Jaya Ballard, so kind of interesting. What do you think of it, Richard? Like, is Are we going to see more of this? Is this like a new thing, like older people in the artwork, or what's going on with the art of this yeah, card? Is this, 
likely to get my mother to start playing Magic the Gathering? <laughs> Probably not. But I like it. I, I mean, it's a little weird. I, I think that's just because we've kind of been brainwashed by, you know, gaming culture and whatnot. But, like, I, I guess now that they've actually printed this art... I'm kind of sick and tired of these old people that don't look like old people. Like, Liliana should look like Jaya Ballard as well, right? Like, Liliana is, like, super old. Uh, but we have all these characters that are, like, eternal beings and super old, but they look like these little kids. So, good on Jaya for looking like an old person. <laughs> as weird as that sounds. So, it's a little you, weird, but I, I like it. I like it. Do you think that they intentionally like top down design toned down her abilities to represent that she was like getting old and less powerful. Like if she was 20 or 30 years younger, would her abilities be more powerful? <laughs> we should probably stop talking should, about this. Talk, we're going to get in, in trouble. I'm going to get in trouble making fun of Jaya Ballard, but <laughs> uh, Teferi though, the Teferi looks good. It, he doesn't look exactly the same. I think part of this is they don't look the same as their last cards. Like last time we had a Jaya Ballard card, it was the somewhat iconic creature in Planner Chaos. Last time we saw Teferi, Teferi looks somewhat similar, but he looks different too. So I think it's kind of almost like the Snapcaster Mage where like the new art is just like so different. I When I think of... um. I think wrongly, when I see Snapcaster Mage, I think, oh, like, that is, uh, it's a specific character. When technically Snapcaster Mage could be, it's just a mage that Snapcasters stuff. So it's not a specific, like, name character. But I think it's a little weird that Teferi, like, somehow looks different than he looked before. And Jaya Ballard, I guess she kind of looks different too. Like, aging, I guess, makes sense. So I think that's part of it, is last time we saw these characters, they looked a little different than they look now. Yeah, wait, I thought Teferi's, like, some time, like, he shouldn't look older, right? He should look like Joyra, where they just lock in their appearance. What's the story, Seth? We're on, like, part three of the Domineer story. I haven't read any of it. <laughs> I I have not read any of it either. <laughs> uh, Teferi is, like, stuck in a time bowl. I thought he doesn't age, but I don't know. We got, we got to go back and read. People are, like, think... really angry right now. They're like, come on, they explained it in the story, guys. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so, I don't know, uh, maybe we should talk about other cards. <laughs> Alright, well, while we're talking about aging, we got, we got Joyra. <laughs> Joyra, uh, also stuck in time bubble, looks like she's 20. <laughs> yeah, Joyra might have gotten younger, like, Benjamin buttoned <laughs> her way since we last saw her. <laughs> uh, okay, so, so Joyra is the head of the weather light now. We've already talked about her card. Uh, so we're gonna talk about her... Her crew of legendary misfits, I, I, I guess. They're all kind of two-colored enemy. Actually, no, it's not enemy. I guess they're just randomly colored people. Uh, so we'll start with Arvad the Cursed. Uh, so these have been previously known, but we haven't talked about them yet. So we're going to talk about them in depth today. Uh, Arvard, Arvad the Cursed. Three white and a black. Three, three. Vampire Knight. Death Touch Lifelink. Other legendary creatures you control get plus two, plus two. And these are all uncommons, except for Joyra. Joyra is a mythic, but her crew are all legendary creatures that are uncommons. I think it's a fun casual slash brawl card. I don't think it's... <laughs> oh, we added uh, brawl to the mix now. I think it yeah. works in brawl. <laughs> good, good, in, good in brawl. That's like <laughs> one step down from good in commander. <laughs> but no, I think it's a little over-costed, but the ability is powerful. It's kind of like Day of Destinies. I guess it's exactly like Day of Destinies, but on creature form. So pumping your legends plus two, plus two can be good. But the body ugh, dies to like a braids and lightning strikes and stuff, which I think might be a little rough. It is a vampire and a knight, though which are two relevant creature types for standard. So I guess we'll have to see. Maybe there's like some legendary tribal deck. I'm so, are we talking about standard? Are we talking about brawl? Are we talking about commander with these cards? Yeah, I, I, it's a weird set. It almost feels like this set was designed for brawl and commander more than standard. So you're saying Arvad is bad. <laughs> I think Arvad is probably fine and probably good in brawl. Probably okay in commander, but probably bad in standard. I think that's fair. Legendary creatures get plus two, plus two. It's pretty strong. But then the downside is you got to play legendary creatures, which uh, is not as enticing as it would be in, say, standard. But yeah. uh, can you imagine just giving your Thalia a plus two, plus two? She'd be like a 
four four three first striker. That'd be sweet. That would be pretty sweet. Yeah, I don't really like Arvon though. He's kind of. I mean, he dies to lightning bolt, which is I guess a braid or lightning strike in <laughs> standard. But he does take anything down. He's death touch and lifelink. Yeah, it's a good combination of. Uh, keywords, but yeah, I think if it had one more toughness. Also, we gotta remember, too, all these creatures are legendary themselves, which is a little awkward, so I think a lot of the cards we're gonna talk about, probably the right answer for standard is maybe they show up as one-ofs somewhere, like if there's the right deck, you could see it being a one-of, but it's hard to imagine a card like Arvad being four-of, even if there's a deck that really wanted it, just because the legendary thing can make it a little clunky. All right, I might as well read the flavor text since we didn't have it. <laughs> I won't abandon the weather light. My destiny is to serve Joyra's side. This illness means I must trust my faith more and myself less. What's the illness? He's a vampire. Oh. This was not the spoiler or the flavor text I was waiting for. This was pretty weak. <laughs> <laughs> uh, apparently being a vampire is an illness and he's like, okay, we'll just trust my night nightly faith. That will do will do good by Joy right here. All right. Slime put the stowaway. My favorite card. <laughs> One black and a green. Legendary creature fungus. Two three. Uncommon. When a sapperling you control dies, slime put the stowaway deals one damage to each opponent and you gain one life. Pay for create a one one green sapperling creature token. I just want sapperling aristocrats to be a thing. It's like sapperling blood artist. And it's good. It's like a three mana two three. It's like decent body, makes saplings, and it's like a blood artist. You can collect a company for it. <laughs> It'll be interesting. I think my concern is: Are we gonna have enough sapling support? Like we we have tender shoot dryad, which was kind of the plant from Ixlan block that made us think saplings were coming back. But I haven't seen we have the sapling raise the alarm or whatever, right? That's yeah. I guess, that dra- is, I guess dragon that's fodder. <laughs> Sapperling, yeah, dragon fodder, but yeah. we, I think we need more support for sapperlings before I think it's standard playable. Wait, we have a lot. And of maybe we get it. We we have spore crown thalid, which was a a bear, but each other creature you control that's a fungus or sapling gets plus one plus one, so it's a lord. Uh, Richard, you're you're those cards aren't they don't exist yet. <laughs> Why can't I jump ahead to the lead card, Seth? <laughs> We're making sapperlings, okay. <laughs> That's true. I guess I guess in the leak cards there probably is more Sapper League support. I was pretending like they didn't exist. Seth, should it's I more... should I be buying out Fallen Empire boxes now to, to stock up on my Thalids? I bought a I actually bought a playset of Elvish Farmer because of the Sapper Leagues returning, so do do with that as you will. Verdant Force? Oh, oh the Sapling deck is gonna be so good. I mean, I actually played I played Fungus Tribal with Zapperlings being part of it on Commander Clash not that long ago, and there's not that many good legends for the tribe. So I actually think that Slimefoot is going to be a pretty popular commander for Fungus slash Zapperling Tribal. It's in the right... I mean, you have the one commander deck one, the Abzan colored one, but if you want to be just straight green-black, I think Slimefoot might actually be the best or one of the best commanders for a fungus slash sapperling deck. Yep. I think it's the best member of the crew, even though it's just a fungus. <laughs> and and it's a stowaway. It's not even like supposed to be a member of the crew, right? It just like somehow how do you sneak onto the weather light? <laughs> With magic. <laughs> <laughs> So, someone left, like, a sandwich outside in the sun, and then it grew into some fungus, and then you got Slimefoot. <laughs> All right, we got Tiana, Ship's Caretaker. Three red and a white. It's a 3-3 three, three Angel Artificer, legendary. Flying first strike, when an aura or equipment you control is put into a graveyard from the battlefield, you may return that card to its owner's hand at the beginning of the next end step. Yeah. I think, like, what I said about Aravad is, or Arvad, whatever it is, is basically the same. Like, it seems like a cool card, but you got the same 
three toughness, five mana. It just lines up really poorly with the braids and lightning strikes and stuff as far as standard. I think it can be kind of fun and powerful, though. It's definitely, it reminds me of like a thick scrap trawler to some extent, where you can't really combo off because you got to wait till your end step to get back the cards that go to the graveyard. But you can definitely generate a lot of value, I think, from your stuff dying, if you have like auras that draw cards and so forth. So there's probably some really cool things you can do with it and build around it, something where you're like sacrificing your own stuff and getting it back and kind of comboing off, but I don't know if that's a thing you can do in standard. Good in Brawl. Good in Brawl. It's good in Brawl. <laughs> Is it, if you can't do it in standard, can you do it in Brawl, really? Do we have enough auras and equipment that are worth playing to make this worth it? Uh, probably not. Oh, what, what I don't like about this card is the art reminds me of like a dwarf or something yeah it does i was thinking that too i was thinking it should be a dwarf as well she does have like magnificent wings though the wings are are very are very nice (laughs) oh those are oh i thought that okay i see that now i I, I thought there was like a peacock or something behind (laughs) there's like a bird on the ship (laughs) as well (laughs) yeah another stowaway (laughs) all right Seth. this is actually a new card he was not leaked because Apparently, it's very straightforward. We don't need release notes for him. <laughs> Wrath Capuchin, Ship's Mage. Two white and a blue. Three, three, human wizard, flash flying. You may cast historic spells as though they had flash. I think this is the one that's closest to being standard playable. You Like, yes, it still, it still dies to lightning strikes and a braids, the three toughness thing, but a four mana, three, three, flash flying... That's not that bad of a rate anyway. And then the ability of flashing your stuff can be really powerful. You can flash in your, I don't know, worm coil engine during combat and just get them. Uh, Or there's a ton of legends. So I think this card is actually in the conversation, if there's the right deck, that it could be standard playable. Yeah, I think flashing in sagas is pretty interesting because you get the effect immediately and then... If you're doing it end of turn, then during your upkeep, you get the second effect of the saga as well. So it, 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 speed it kind of speeds things up. Yeah, instant speed Armageddon. That actually, that is a good point. I always forget about the sagas being part of historic. Like, artifacts seem like the most common use for these cards. And then with Dominarian specific, there's a lot of legends. And then sagas are kind of like, eh, sure, maybe that'll happen sometimes. But this one, you're right. It does seem like it is pretty sweet by, to let you like cast a saga on your opponent's end step, get the ability, get the second lore counter when you go to your next turn. And then you're kind of like jumping the curve a little bit as far as the timing of your sagas. Yeah, this is weird because it's artifacts, legendaries, and sagas. So you can flash in your planeswalkers as well. You just can't activate them <laughs> because you still can only activate them at sorcery speed but you can still flash them in you can like use your planeswalkers as fogs like wait till your opponent's beginning of combat and flash them in and hope your opponent <laughs> decides they gotta attack your planeswalker instead of you <laughs> uh if only it was like play or something so you can flash in uh legendary lands that's the only mm, thing that... you can't do here because it has you have to cast it yeah that would be pretty sweet i wonder huh I mean, we, and it's all legendaries. So we have some, like, legendary permanents in Standard, too, that are, like, somewhat interesting. Like the Monument Cycle, Argus Bloodfast, Azur's Gateway. So there's, maybe there's something, too, that are, like, growing rights of Itlamok. There's some interesting things that you could do at instant speed with this card. Uh. Journey to Eternity is insane. Like, wait till your opponent's casting a removal spell on one of your creatures, and you can flash in your Journey to Eternity. I was going to say flash into GTA, but then you can't equip it. Uh, <laughs> you, need, you, need, you need something that it's the speed equip. <laughs> you need, yeah. I think there's something from original Mirrodin that does that. Sakura something. Yeah. All right. So that's the crew. Uh, we, wait, there was one more. Sisse, but we already know what Sisse does. So that's the entirety of the Weatherlight crew. They're going somewhere. I didn't read the story. They're on their ship and they're going somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> we got the ship. <laughs> What do you think of the ship as far as actually being competitively playable? All right. So the ship is a vehicle. Four mana, four, five. We're not done with vehicles yet. <laughs> Legendary artifact vehicle flying. Uh, when the Weatherlight deals combat damage to a player, look at the top five cards of your library. You may reveal a historic card from among them and put it in your hand. Put the rest on the bottom of your library in a random order. Crew three. And- <gasps> 
<laughs> card advantage is nice, I guess. Uh, it just so much work. As as, <laughs> yeah, it, like this card just shows you how busted in push the Kaladesh vehicle. Like when you read this, and then you read Smuggler's Copter, you're like, oh my goodness, that card was so broken compared to like yeah, it quips for or in quips it crews for one it loots when it blocks or attacks it doesn't have to deal combat damage so i think this card can be good but it feels like a like a one of type card to me like maybe marty vehicles plays it as a one of you have a decent amount of vehicles that you can hit so you're naturally already have historic spells so if the game goes long it blocks glory bringer or whatnot so maybe there's some world where it can actually be pretty good this is pretty close to like playing a sarah angel <laughs> i don't know that I, I would even put this in a deck list it's a format of four five which you need you know three power to crew and then even then like it's maybe draws you a card if you hit like you, you need to be playing enough <laughs> legendaries or vehicles or sagas or artifacts to like actually hit with this i don't know that this is even playable it's kind of disappointing uh i think i think it's better than that i think it's playable but i think it's definitely less i think i'd rank it fourth out of the vehicles we have like i think it's behind smuggler's copter it's behind heart of Kirin, and it's behind uh, the three mana life gain one. I can't think of the name at the moment, but so I think it's like kind of far down the vehicle hierarchy, but it might still be good enough just because when it's good, it's going to be really good when you're anticipating or impulsing every turn, getting another card. There is a lot of value there and the body's not horrible. A four or five flyer for four isn't the worst. I don't know. <laughs> are we, are I think we, are I... we on to like uh, earn abdigen <laughs> <laughs> power toughness now? Dude. Uh, All right. What about the favor, uh, the flavor aspect of this? Uh, everyone part that's part of the weatherlight crew can actually crew the weatherlight except the slime foot stowaway. <laughs> Oh, you're right. They all have three power. They all cost five. <laughs> but they have three power. They could just individually crew the weather light if they felt like it. That is a little weird. Like, it seems like maybe Joyra should have been the only one that could crew it by herself for flavor purposes. Yeah, I, I feel like they should have. They lost an opportunity to make Cauldra here. I, I feel like if you have like five of these legendaries and you crew the weather light, you should just win the game. <laughs> I, I feel like something should have happened here. You should have Voltron this thing. Get everyone on the ship. And if the ship dies, you lose. But otherwise, <laughs> you win the game. <laughs> that actually would be kind of cool. That And it would be... That would be a hard win condition to pull off. Because they're spread across so many different colors. I would have been down with that. Yeah. All right. Uh, we got more Mythics. We've talked about this briefly. Now we have Art. Mox Amber, zero, legendary artifact. Tap to add one mana of any color among legendary creatures and planeswalkers you control. The art's sweet. Is it? There's no hand in it, though. Don't we always need to have a hand holding a gem or something? Is that not all the Mox in art? <laughs> Someone pointed out on Twitter, I think it was Vorthos Mike, pointed out on Twitter that actually the first printing of pretty much all Moxen, the exception was Mox Opal actually doesn't have a hand oh. but then usually the reprinting or the second time it gets art it usually has a hand yeah this is like giving me jurassic park vibes here like is there a mosquito <laughs> in the <laughs> in the amber over there is this card good richard no <laughs> <laughs> i mean i you know you need to activate it early but this thing requires a permanent that usually isn't free. We don't have zero mana planeswalkers. We don't have zero mana creatures. So it's just an actually really fair mock. So fair that you don't actually want to play it. What about commander? Like, is this auto include in your commander deck? Because you already have a legend in your command zone. Easy to play legends. Or is it not even... I'd rather play is it a, a commander mana, mana rock than play this. Like the... <laughs> There's too much variability, right? Like, if you don't have your commander out, unless you're actually playing Zergo or something, like, if you have, like, a 4-5 or five mana commander, this thing doesn't tap for mana. So, un until you actually cast your commander, at which point this pays commander tax. Like, I don't know what the point is. It's, like, so late. So I'd rather just have the consistency of a 2-mana mana rock. This is a card that I want to say is bad, but then... 
I know that if I say it's bad, it's going to break something. Like, every mox ever has been good. It's like three mana planeswalkers. I always say they're bad, but then I always got to be like, well, but always three mana planeswalkers end up seeing play, even if they look bad. So I feel kind of the same about Mox Amber. Like, when you read it over, you're like, eh, this seems like a really fair, not that good mox, but it's still a mox. So it's, I think it still has a chance to do something. It's just going to be a lot harder to figure out than any of the past mocks we've had. Even like, uh, we have one mana legends in standard, like turn one, Ovaya Prishi, <laughs> also play Mox Amber, also play Lana or Elves or something, and you're just like, off to the races. <laughs> All right. Great design to search six or whatever we're on now. <laughs> what if they made a zero mana 2-1 legendary? Ooh, that was every color. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's right. It has to be a color, otherwise this thing doesn't activate. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that's the other problem. I've seen some people like <laughs> hope of Gurupur or whatever. Like, no, that doesn't actually that doesn't actually work. What about Tibalt? Can this make Tibalt playable? <laughs> uh, how? <laughs> like turn to Tibalt, Mox Amber, Lightning Bolt. Your this face makes go. Tibalt playable in that when you plus him, you might randomly discard your Mox and get a better <laughs> card. <laughs> Uh, I think it, it's gotta be better than that. It's a mox. It's gotta. There's gotta be something that we're missing. It does seem super safe. It would though. be a lot better I, if I think I talked about this the first time. If a legendary land somehow activated this thing, because you could feasibly turn one legendary land and then mox amber and off to the races. Oh, if mox opal counted for this, but it doesn't because it's legendary creatures. If it's just legendary permanents. Then if you could, like, Mox Opal with Mox Amber, it would be pretty good. I think the other thing is, even the way it's worded is really safe, where it only adds mana of the color of the thing you have. So I wish I wish it was, like, more like Mox Opal, where it was, like, only activate this. Uh, tap for a mana of any color. You can only activate it if you have a legendary creature or planeswalker. Then at least it could be mana fixing, but this isn't even really good mana fixing. You already have to have a five color thing if you want all five colors, and if you have a five color thing, you already have all five colors, so it can't even do the, like, an affinity in modern. Mox Opal's a card that lets them play, like, all these weird off-color sideboard cards, even though they're basically a colorless deck. Yeah. Mox Amber can't really do that in its current form, so I don't know. I Hopefully it does something. My hopes aren't high, but I'm really scared to just say it's bad, because it is a Mox, and I'm afraid that it's going to break something, and I I will have missed it. I, I'm fine with the Sahili Rai argument. If they print, like, one the exact one card needed to break this card, then so <laughs> be it. But otherwise, this card in general is pretty bad. Uh, let's move on. Uh, we can talk about... The callback cards, Wizard's Retort and Wizard's Lightning. So Wizard's Retort is one blue-blue instant. The spell costs one less to cast if you control a wizard, counter target spell. And Wizard's Lightning is two in a red instant. The spell costs two less if you control a wizard, uh, deals three damage to any target. I think these cards are pretty good for standard. We're getting, we're getting a lot of wizards, and the nice thing about these cards in standard is... They're not that far from being playable if you don't have a wizard. Like, three mana counters RDC play in standard, so if for some reason everything goes wrong, you can still cast your wizard's retort and counter something, cancel style. You can still throw a three mana lightning bolt. I guess that's open fire at your opponent's face. So I feel like they're going to be pretty good, especially if wizards are playable. Like, if you just have enough wizards that you're getting the discount a reasonable amount of the time, and knowing that, oh, worst case, you can still just pay full price, they seem like they're pretty good. Yeah, I like Wizard's Retort a lot more because Cancel is actually playable. I don't know that three mana Lightning Bolt is playable, <laughs> but it is Lightning Bolt if you have a Wizard out. It depends if we have good Wizards, and I didn't look at the leaked cards that thoroughly, so I don't know if we have good Wizards or not. It's pretty sweet with, like, Snapcaster. It's just, like, a Lightning Bolt with Snapcaster. Do you, do you think people will play this as Lightning Bolt in Modern with Snapcasters? Mm. No. Well, because you have real Lightning Bolt. Maybe, yeah, I lightning guess it could bolt. be, like, number five or six yeah. Lightning Bolt. Maybe? I think you got to have more than just Snapcaster, like, to make it work in modern. What, what's Young Pyromancer? He's not a wizard, right? I 
Yeah. That Bandlin Reveler is not a wizard. <laughs> is it? Young Pyromancer <laughs> is a shaman, human shaman. There are some good ones like Vendillion Click, Bob uh, are both wizards. Wait, Bob is a wizard? I didn't even know this. <laughs> yeah. Um, Vencers. Vencers are wizards. So there's like a Reflector Mage is a wizard. In standard, there's some weird ones too. Um, the one drop with prowess, uh, Soul Scar Mage Soul Scar is Mage. a wizard. Yeah. So maybe we can see like wizard tribal be a thing. Mm-hmm. I do. I do like the callback to Lightning Bolt and Counterspell. It reminds me a little bit of the Dragon Cycle from Dragons of Tarkir, where we had the the two mana counter spell that was a force spike, but if you had a dragon or revealed a dragon, it was counter spell. Yep. They feel very similar to that to me. Yep. All right. And because we have to go here, Seth, we're going to talk about planeswalker deck planeswalker. <laughs> 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 so oh, we've dear. already talked about Chandra bold pyromancer. We got to fairy time bender four white and a blue five starting loyalty untap. Oh, plus one untap up to one target artifact or creature. Oh, sorry, that's a plus two. So plus two, untap one artifact or creature. Minus three, you gain two life and draw two cards. Minus nine, take a turn after this one. Uh, It's a Planeswalker deck, Planeswalker. (laughs) (laughs) I think it's not that great. I think it's kind of interesting... The Chain Veil is kind of cool, because you can untap the Chain Veil and just, like, activate your Planeswalkers again. If you could make enough mana, I think you can go infinite with your uh, with your Chain Veil in this Teferi, which is a kind of a cool against-the-odds combo, or maybe in Commander you can do it, but... Uh, what if I... you have Doubling Season and a Venser? <laughs> So you, you take an extra turn and bounce the fairy afterwards. Ooh, that could work. I mean, extra turns are good. That's infinite extra turns right there. <laughs> I've done it. I don't know. It's six mana, though. But it's infinite <sighs> extra turns. <laughs> you need a venture. Extra- and venture's in the right colors. <laughs> and a doubling season, right? That That is true. You need a doubling but- season. But... <laughs> uh, we're we're we always go back to doubling season. Planeswalkers do crazy things with doubling season. That much is, I mean, that is cool. It is a cool infinite turn combo. It's similar, it reminds me of Planeswalker deck of Johnny with the infinite <laughs> turn combo. I can't see it being standard playable though, right? It's getting like, closer. It's not... This is like, I could if someone played this, it wouldn't be that crazy. I mean, it would be pretty crazy, but not that crazy. We're getting more playable with these Planeswalker deck Planeswalkers. Eventually, they're going to print a good one. Like Jason Mind Sculpture <laughs> of the Planeswalker deck Planeswalkers. All right, Seth. I think those are all the cards we want to talk about. <laughs> oh, Ended up Dominaria. With the so, so, overall, I'm still really excited for Dominaria. What do you think of the legendary thing, Richard, before we move on to Brawl? Like, there's a lot of legends in this set. Are those cards going to be standard? Like, assuming they're good enough to see standard play, how much does being legendary matter? Like, uh, is a card like Joyra, is it going to still be able to see standard play, even though it's legendary? Are we going to see these weird standard decks that look like commander decks where everyone's playing one of things because they want to minimize the drawback of things being legendary? How is that going to impact gameplay, do you think? Ah. I don't know. I I think we're going to have strong removal in standard because of Lawn War Elf, because we've seen cast down, uh, you know, fatal push. So we're going to have strong removal. So maybe redundant copies of your legendaries aren't bad because they're going to get removed. But like when you look at something like a five drop, like how many of those can you put in your deck to begin with? And now that it's legendary, how many are you really going to put in your deck? So I don't think they're going to see that much play. I remember, you know, Thalia as a two-drop, people would play three tops because they don't want too many Thalias. And I I think with some of these more expensive things like Joyra or Raph Capuchin, ah, like maybe two of max? It's it's not like a Planeswalker where the second one still has value. It's like the second one's really dead unless the first one gets removed somehow. 
So I, I think it, it it will be a drawback. Un unless you see some weirdness where you play like two Joyras, two Wrath Capuchin split or something to kind of mitigate the, the commander, oh sorry, the legendary aspect. But I don't know. These, these cards haven't been like so good that I'm willing to take the risk of just jamming four and dealing with it. <laughs> Yeah, it'll definitely be interesting, because I can't think of the last time we had a set that was all about Legends, Kamigawa. Like, it's been a long time, so I think it's going to be really interesting to see what it does to deck building. And I'm not 100% sure. I think if there's very good ones that are legendary, good creatures that are legendary, like Heart of Kirin. People jam four Heart of Kirins. Sure, you're going to get some dead draws sometimes, but it's a huge target for removal. And when it lives, it's just going to win you the game super quickly. So I'm sure we'll have some Legends like that, but I think we are going to see some weird looking splits in deck lists to try to minimize the drawback of legends i think the last uh, legendary set was maybe cons didn't cons uh, cons had a decent amount yeah i guess that's true like and even like return to ravnica you had all like the guild leader cycles and uh maze runner cycles and stuff so we've seen but we haven't seen a set where like uncommons are legendary or anything for a long time this feels even more extreme than like cons as far as legends yeah, this is gonna mess up your limited decks because since yeah. they're uncommons, you're going to get a lot of them. You're like, how many of these should I actually put in my deck? And it's it's going to be weird for playing uh, sealed and draft. Well, the good news is Wizards, to minimize the legendary drawback, created a whole new format <laughs> where, where uh, legendary is not a drawback but a benefit. So, Richard, we wanted to talk a little bit about Brawl this week. We touched on it briefly last week, but we wanted to really delve into it a little bit before getting to the fish mail. So, are you excited for Brawl? Is this a format you're planning on playing? Mm, probably not un until Moto supports it. <laughs> but I, I am excited about it because... People are very excited about this. I, I think allowing Planeswalkers as your commander just opens things up. Like, you can play any Legendary now as your commander. So you can be, here's a Liliana Death's Majesty deck. Or here's a Liliana Death Wielder deck. So I think that's actually pretty cool. And I, I see where Wizards is coming from. If you want to play commander, you kind of have to start with the commander pre-con. Otherwise... Unless you've been playing since, you know, 1995, a lot of the staples are really old. They're like pre-modern cards and stuff. So it's hard to get your hands on them. So this is an easy way to get into playing multiplayer casual commander uh, without actually having to have a deep card pool. So I, I think it's pretty cool for, for newer players. So do you think this is a format that will help commander? Like, is this going to be an entryway? Like, people pick this up, they play it, their cards start to rotate, and they're like, huh, I kind of like this style of play. I'm actually going to get a real commander deck. Or do you think it's, it doesn't really have any tie-in or impact there? Uh, I think I think it will. I think a lot of people will start playing this just because, you know, they, they draft or they play standard, and then now they can build a brawl deck and they'll start playing. And then eventually someone will make the leap to Commander. But I think this will actually cause a big influx of, of new casual players. Which, I mean, that's a good thing. I like that it gives people additional value for your standard cards. Like, if you buy a booster box, you probably won't be able to build a standard deck. You're pretty much guaranteed to not be able to build a tier standard deck. But if you buy a booster box, there's probably a pretty good chance, especially with Dominaria with so many legends, that you'll open a legend that you think is cool. And just from that box, you can pull out all your one-ofs and build the deck out of that box. So I think that that's a really cool aspect of it. That but it seems very helpful for casual players. It'll be interesting. Like, do you think there's going to be tournaments for this? Like, they said it's going on Magic Online. Do you think we're going to have leagues and stuff? Are they going to run side events at GPs? Or do you think this is just very much a casual format with no real tournament tie-ins? I think you'll have the same casual tournaments for EDH as you or uh, for brawl as you do for edh so like maybe at a gp you can sign up and sit down with three other people play and win or get something but i, I can't see like a 1v1 tournament or stuff like that I, I don't know that that's the point of this format 
it's basically Commander, 60 card deck, some slight tweaks like starting at less life, but the big change is Planeswalkers being legal as Commanders. So what do you think about that, Richard? Do you think it's going to be fun to have Planeswalker as your Commander? Is it a good thing, bad thing? And also, is there any chance that this is like sort of a test run for maybe commander proper now that planeswalkers are legendary changing the rules so planeswalkers can be commanders yeah this never made any sense to me like planeswalkers are iconic legendary (laughs) characters in the magic universe they should be the front face of your commander decks so for some reason the edh rules committee has never adopted this and planeswalkers in general kind of suck in edh the reason being is you have three other players trying to kill your commander, which is now a planeswalker, so they can just attack it. So it's not even overpowered. So I think this is the natural progression. I don't know if the rules committee is actually going to make the change, but I think this makes sense from a player's p- perspective. Right? I want to build a Liliana deck. I want to build a Nissa deck. I want to build a Nicol Bolas deck. Right? It makes a lot of sense. So I, I think uh, it's one of the better changes that Wizards has uh, kind of suggested for the format. Yeah, I think it's really cool, too. I If I played Paper Commander, I would 100% be on board with a house rule that made Planeswalkers legal. Assuming, like, people are going to be going to be respectful of it. Like, if someone was building, like, the doubling season deck all the time, that would probably get pretty annoying. Like, that, maybe doubling season would just have to be banned if you're going to make Planeswalkers legal as a commander, because that could be problematic. But I think you're right. I think that Wizards has really pushed to make Planeswalkers basically the face of the game like that is the face of magic now is planeswalkers and in commander has become one of the most important formats even the creation of brawl is an admission from wizards that this casual format is a huge part of the game so i feel like it's just like the natural evolution of things that planeswalkers and commander should combine because like you said they're not that good in commander right now like there's a few exceptions but generally speaking you play a planeswalker you got three opponents they're going to be able to attack and kill it. So I feel like it's a natural and probably good progression that we had that direction and Commander and Planeswalkers sort of like come together and are more important because they are just like huge parts of the game at this point. So what do you think about power level, Seth? If I have a fully powered Brawl deck, can I join a Commander group of, let's say, people playing pre-cons and have a reasonable game? Do Do you think... A fully powered brawl deck can compete with a pre-constructed commander deck. No, I don't think so. How 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 like different do you think it is? I think it's a big step down in power level. You're missing uh, maybe with a precon. May- <sighs> Precons are pretty good maybe- nowadays. <laughs> yeah, that's that's what I was thinking. You're missing a lot of the things. I think it really is its own format. When I think of Commander, I'm thinking of, like, all this ramp, cheap mana rocks, cultivates, uh, signets. You're ramping into this big stuff, doing powerful things. I feel like Brawl doesn't really have a lot of those things. Like, you don't have those mana rocks in Standard. You don't have cultivates and Kadamas reaches very often in Standard. So I feel like it's going to be very much its own thing compared to Commander, and I think commander decks are going to be a lot more powerful than brawl decks but i think that's okay like i don't think brawl decks have to compete with commander decks what i think you can do though is let's say you build a brawl deck and you decide you do want to start playing commander that's when you can get stuff that isn't even that expensive uh signets soul rings stuff like that and upgrade your brawl deck into a commander deck that would probably have a pretty good chance of competing Mm -hmm. well that's kind of disappointing seth (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> <laughs> what, I, I thought that was going to be the gateway in and, but I, I think you're right because what I was envisioning is you start playing Brawl and then you want to play Commander so your Commander friends let you in and even though your deck is not as powerful it's still pretty serviceable and you guys can have a fun time but like you said there are a lot of mechanics and cards that are multiplayer specific that you play in Commander like imagine the partners all the broken stuff we've seen in the last couple uh, you know, Myriad, Melee, like all those mechanics you don't get access to. You have kind of 1v1 mechanics, which is a, a big disadvantage. So, so yeah, maybe 
uh, maybe, maybe it's tough. Maybe Brawl isn't the right answer to Commander. Maybe buying a pre-con and just going that way is the better way to get into Commander. So I have another question for you, Richard. Do you have any concern that this format gets salved? Do you remember when Tiny Leaders first came out and me and you like tested it and played it and we thought it was pretty fun and then like six months later it was really solved and really stale and Geist of St. Draft was the only deck that mattered and the format died. Is there any chance of that happening or does the fact that it's standard and we have rotations and set releases, is that going to be enough to keep it fresh and make it so there's not one dominant deck in Brawl? Because it's a casual multiplayer format, I don't think that's an issue. Like, if this was a 1v1 format, like Tiny Leaders, then yeah, I would say that that's probably an issue. Whereas this is, you're just building whatever fun stuff you want to build. And of course, there's going to be decks that will be tier 1 and good. But I think they'll kind of be self-policing with rotations. And because it's multiplayer, all the weaker players will gang up on the stronger deck and stuff like that. So I think that's fine. I think most people are excited you know, not to build the best Brawl deck, but to build the deck they want. Like, oh, you know, I want to build a really cool Sahili Rai deck, or I want to build in a Johnny Cat deck, or something like that, right? So I think that aspect is what people will focus on, rather than how do I build, you know, Ramunap Red and Brawl. Like, I don't, I don't think people will be trying to do stuff like that. I think it'll be interesting, because Standard is a pretty spiky format. Like, when I think of standard players, I think of pretty spiky players in general. Like, of course, there's casual players and all that, but it will be interesting. Like, think of, like, Brad Nelson or someone like that, like, building Brawl decks. I, well, he's not going to play Brawl, to... right? I mean, I theoretically, know, the commander seen, like... card pool is vintage, and vintage players are very spiky. <laughs> I, I would have said that, too, that tournament players would just ignore it, and maybe that's what'll happen, but I've seen, since this announcement in the last week, like, Sam Black wrote an article on SCG of him brewing Brawl deck lists. There's been, I think, Seth Manfield had an article go up of deck lists for Brawl, so I, maybe they're just doing that because their sites want content on it or whatever, but it seems like there's at least some amount of really good pro level players that are at least somewhat interested in the format, which uh, interesting to me. Pro, pros I don't have fun. That at all. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> pros, pros hate magic. They just do it for the paycheck. <laughs> they just do it for the minuscule paycheck of being a yeah. magic pro. Come on. <laughs> yeah. Yes. They have to spend yeah 12 hours a day all weekend to try to, to try to win back their entry fee. <laughs> I, I think uh, it's a casual format. I, I think the pros are just jumping on it to sell standard staples or stuff like that. I this is gonna be a casual format. I, I don't I, I don't think we're gonna have kind of big one v one tournaments and stuff like that. Because you would just play standard instead. This is for get together with your friends, build some janky brews with whatever you found in your trade binder, and then let's go. I think it'll be that kind of format. So, Richard, one last brawl question before fish mail. We got to wait for it to release on Magic Online, which it's coming with Dominaria before we can do a Commander Clash. But what is the first brawl deck you want to build once we can start playing it? I want to build one with the Planeswalker deck, Planeswalker. <laughs> I think I think I'm gonna have to build Liliana Death Wielder. <laughs> it's gonna be so janky, Seth. That that should be the first commander clash. We each get a planeswalker deck planeswalker and have to build a brawl That's deck too around expensive. it. You know how expensive these planeswalker deck planeswalkers are in Magic Online, Seth? <laughs> Literally no they, one has them in stock. You gotta buy the sealed product and open it up. <laughs> that is very true. I have to say I'm slightly disappointed that I feel like Wizards, with this format being created, they have to make sure there's always a five-color legend in in the format, because that's how I like to play There's Commander. no mana base I to just... support this. <laughs> it's a standard mana base. You can't make five-colored mana base. Uh, I will find a way, Richard. I will find a way. But I might play, like, Sakama. Sakama's got three colors, at least. Yeah, you can play Nicol think... Bolas. Nicol Bolas is pretty sweet. Nicol Bolas. Yeah, Commander, having Planeswalkers, that definitely changes things. And I think that's probably what I'm most excited to build around, because we've done a lot of Commander, build a lot around a lot of these creatures as Commanders, but we haven't really been able to do it with Planeswalkers. So I think that's going to be the big appeal of the format for me, building like an Ajani Valiant Protector deck, or building a Veraska deck, or something like that. So I don't... <laughs> Dovinbon, <laughs> Dovinbon Tribal. <laughs> I can fi finally, Donovan Bain has a chance to shine. <laughs> oh, boy. Oh, man. A 
anyway, any other thoughts on Brawl, Richard, before we get to fish mail? Uh, no, I think our, our what was my last count? We have like 500 Brawl decks on the website now. A lot of people are building Brawl, Brawl decks. So I'm interested to see. I, I don't know when we're going to figure out if this is a real thing or not. I guess at a Grand Prix to see if there are side events. Like I, I don't know how to figure out if this format is actually being played and is popular. Maybe Moto. We might be able to to see you once it comes. Yeah, but like on Magic no one plays Commander on Moto. <laughs> I mean, that's not reflective uh, of anything, right? <laughs> yeah, that that is true. All right, time uh time to move on to fish mail. So if you have your questions, send them to at MTG Goldfish with the hashtag MTG Fish Mail, and we'll get to your questions on air. First question: Hugh Dog two three four. Do you think it's possible to see a similar card acquisition mechanic in Arena? To the one Pokemon uses where you buy paper packs and it comes with the code. No. I I mean, it's possible, but based on what we've seen from the economy so far, it feels like Wizards wants to make a lot of money off of Arena, <laughs> and just essentially giving away Arena for free as a bonus for buying a booster box ah, seems unlikely to me. I think they'll do something with codes. Maybe you buy a booster box, you get a code for a free card or something, but to actually do it like Pokemon, where it's pack for pack, box for box, I doubt it. Yeah, you, you get, like, a free common. <laughs> that, that's, yeah. what, that's what Magic Arena <laughs> with, will do. It, it'll be a free common with, like, a 1 in 100 chance to upgrade <laughs> to, to a random rare or mythic. To a random uncommon, Seth. Come on. <laughs> yeah. yeah, we don't want to yeah, go too people far. People really love the Pokemon model, but I don't... Nothing has indicated that Wizards is going to go there. Everything they have <laughs> see, uh, shown us implies they want you to buy booster packs on Arena. Uh, next question, LJB FGC. Why does temporal machinations look like the versus screen of Mortal Kombat three? Time to look at the card. <laughs> yep, looking it up. Uh, a little <laughs> bit, a little. The, the kinda, pose isn't as dramatic as it should be. I can kind of see it though. All right, Viper Johnny B. Do you know of any way to make Aetherflex Marvel work again in standard? Since we lost Bone Saw, it's not as good. Uh, Joyra? Joyra is coming. Maybe that is the solution. I was just thinking about that today. We have Sram, we have Joyra, so maybe we can make a combo deck built around it, but we are really missing the zero mana artifacts, so I think it's going to be a lot harder. (laughs) Yeah, oh dear, oh dear. We solved it, we figured it out. Mox Amber. It has just as much utility as Bonesaw. (laughs) (laughs) It's like a Darksteel relic. (laughs) Bear Man, Man Bear. <laughs> hey guys, first tweet. I actually enjoy Moto. I'm worried that Arena's gonna kill it. Do I need to stop putting money into Moto? Uh, n- I would say no at this point. I guess it depends on what you want to do. If you're just a hundred percent a standard player, then maybe you'll consider switching over to Arena, based uh, depending on how things shake out. But uh, I wouldn't. I haven't sold my collection or yeah, anything. It's at still this point. really far, and I would still be pretty comfortable putting money into standard into Magic Online right now because it, even Arena standard seems pretty far away. Lol, fail, WTF, BBQ, Seth. Have you got any chicken dinners in PUBG? Do you even play PUBG? <laughs> I thought you played Fortnite. Uh... Yeah, I played a little PUBG, but man, I was bad at that game. So now I play Fortnite because it's easier. (laughs) Sagio Dargento, I feel like the Moto or the Arena economy is getting a bad rap. We're missing both draft and any microtransactions. People seem hyperbolic on something that is clearly incomplete. Thoughts? Uh, My thoughts are Wizards knew that people had concerns and complaints about the economy. If you go back and read the forums for Arena, it's basically full of complaints and concerns about the economy, and Wizards chose to drop the NDA with this economy, which is saying, we want y'all to play and talk about this game. So I feel like, yes, it's true that it's incomplete information, but Wizards 100% did this to themselves by releasing, dropping the NDA with such a bad economy that they knew people were not going to be happy with. So I don't feel bad for Wizards in this scenario because they should have done things differently because this was all very predictable. Yeah, I mean, it is a good point. It is incomplete. So while we do complain, it is subject to change at any time. But I mean, they release it for feedback, so we're just going to complain. Complain. <laughs> <laughs> no feedback, just complain. <laughs> 
Vink SS, are you mentally prepared to get turn three Karned in standard? Yeah, I think I'm actually okay with getting turn three Karned with standard Karn. Yeah, sta- standard Karn is about the same. <laughs> yeah, it's a it's a little different. All right, Benjamin Wifey, please settle the score with your tuned expertise. Pineapple on pizza, yay or nay? That's is that even a real question? Oh, wait, is there what is, what is that your says a- yay to that? Wait, wait, wait. No, no, wait, no, no, no. Oh, Seth, we can't be friends anymore. What's uh, wrong? With- you eat pineapple on pizza? What's wrong with oh, pineapple Richard. On pizza? Oh man, it's the definition of pizza involves pepperoni and not vegetables or fruits. Well, you don't eat like mushrooms or green peppers. I mean, you, you can't just have straight pineapple, but it could be a topping <laughs> with other toppings. It ruins the other toppings. It's like a it takes away from the deliciousness of the real toppings. Pineapple and Canadian bacon, <laughs> otherwise known as Hawaiian. <laughs> oh, Seth. Uh, no, I hate pineapple on pizza. I'm gonna send you a pizza right now with pineapple. <laughs> <laughs> Archangel eight five nine four eight three two. People have very specific number. Like this is like they're like. ICQ number or something. (laughs) (laughs) These are very specific sequences of numbers. What do you guys think of doing a video or series on how you make videos? Like a tutorial using an editor or you use the images or how you make the images appear and stuff like that. I'm interested, but looking on how to start. That might actually... One thing I've noticed with Arena is it's brought in a whole new influx of people interested in making content like there's so many people that are streaming now interested in content so maybe doing a how-to video could be a good idea all right james for junior is steel leaf champion enough to push mono green stompy to the front of the modern meta should i pick up Mm. nikdos now or wait (laughs) uh i don't think so like i think it's an upgrade but i don't think it necessarily solves any of the problems with the deck like it's better than leatherback bay law so the deck improves to some extent but the bigger problem is you still really struggle against just decks that are really heavy on removal and control elements they can just just one for one you until you run out of cards so i think it improves the deck but not so much that it's going to be tier one or anything what was the bay law is a four four a four five four five yeah I like Mono Green Stompy. I think it's a really good budget deck, but I don't know if it can compete with, I just played three Hollow Ones or Stormed You Off on turn three. (laughs) All right, 69 Griggs 420. Don't worry, Seth. I started playing Magic in Return to Ravnica Theros Standard 2. See? (laughs) Hey, (laughs) twins, (laughs) twinsies. Sebastian Tans, Seth and Richard, do you you have ever been got by strip mine they have ruined your game by hitting the correct mana source taking off a color or in a lock have you managed to beat such a lock i usually uh do the getting with strip mine <laughs> if anyone's played like, legacy you've totally been wastelanded <laughs> into oblivion and ended the game doing nothing so yes that's happened what's what's yeah. more tilting is when people know how decks are built so for example the ghost quarter say the forest in jund knowing that you don't have another forest <laughs> <laughs> that that's tilting. You're like, darn you and your impeccable knowledge of my deck. You know I don't have a second green source. It's over. <laughs> uh Sean Buell seventy nine. With respect to Arena, I don't get it. Moto is a perfectly workable platform. Uh as far as it goes, that being a magic similar, I don't care about bells and whistles. Wizards created blank space with Moto and the market has filled it in. Arena kills that. Seth, it's your twin. <laughs> it, it is we actually agree on a lot of that stuff but i i'm actually coming around to the idea that arena and moto are just gonna live side by side like after playing arena i really think that it it and moto can coexist and do different things for different people oh when i play commander clash after playing arena now it hurts my soul so much <laughs> <laughs> i'm like oh i can't keep playing arena because it makes moto <laughs> like so torturous for me i gotta just keep playing moto and not adjust to the modern world <laughs> <laughs> oh dear scotty mtg do you think mardu pyro is still relevant in modern and does cast down slot into it uh i think that mardu pyromancer is still it's still a real deck and pretty good in modern as far as cast down 
I think that the place I see cast down is if you were playing go for the throat, you play cast down instead of it. So I'm not, I don't think that Pyroma uh, Mardu Pyromancer normally plays go for the throat. So I'm going to go with no, because you have access to terminate, which is basically just better if you're in the colors. But I think there will be decks if you're, if you don't have terminate or maybe abrupt decay or whatever, that's the decks that you'll be looking at to play cast down. All right. From Streakus, if Brawl takes off, do you think standard cards will begin referencing the command zone? I I mean, I guess it could happen, but I kind of doubt it. Yeah. Do you, do you think they'll ever, like, you know, instead of target opponents, they'll say, like, all opponents and stuff like Do you think they'll make those changes to standard cards? I mean, I think we already see some of that stuff just with Commander getting big that we see more uh, each opponent or whatever, every opponent. Stuff like that is more common now than it used to be. So I think that in that sense, yes. But as far as being like, oh, uh, this does something in Command Zone, that seems... Um, maybe we'll see like a supplemental product for Brawl if it takes off where <laughs> Wizards can do that just... kind of stuff. <laughs> Brawl 2019. <laughs> Pre-constructed <laughs> decks, which are basically your Planeswalker deck. <laughs> talk yeah <laughs> eraster dominaria has lots of cards with two or three color mana requirements that's good for devotion and gods want devotion it has lots of legendaries kamigawa cares about gods and legendaries do you think we'll return to kamigawa the standard oh i did not follow I that train this... of logic <laughs> <laughs> i think this is the return to kamigawa and we're just not on kamigawa but mechanically with the legends it feels kamigawa-esque to me so I'm going to say no, though. I don't think we're going to return to Kamigawa in the near future. Yeah, I don't know that people like Kamigawa enough. It's like they want to, they say they like Kamigawa, but do they actually like Kamigawa? <laughs> it seems like the most divisive set. If you ever read people asking about it, like some people vehemently do not ever want to go to Kamigawa again because they hate it. And other people, it's like their favorite set that they want to return to the most. Should have bought more packs when it was released if it was their favorite <laughs> set. Uh, Chris Trenzi... Have you guys ever done, or would you plan on doing, any of the grandeur creatures for Against the Odds? Ah, I don't think we ever have done them, but I think that we could do a grandeur poll for Against the Odds. That's a good idea. I'll do a, I'll, we will do a poll for that at some point. All right, Taskmaster 1995. 2019 core set looks like it's going to be based around the villains of Magic. Anything or anyone you want to see? I... I actually don't think it's based around the villains. I think Wizards actually said that, that it was just coincidence that Tezzeret and Nicole Bolas stuff came out first. But uh, maybe like Praetors would be sweet. Elish Norn returns in new form. <laughs> As like three mana Elish Norn that does nothing. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, I don't know what villains I like to see. Nicol Bolas is always the go-to villain. Oh, Yawgmoth. <laughs> Ooh. Maybe they somehow resurrect the Yog Yogmoth. Definitely not Emrakul. <laughs> <laughs> not Emrakul. All right. Benjamin with an I. What are the chances of a new frontier being introduced for Arena knowing the announcement of Brawl and its possible success? 100% happening. I don't know exactly what the starting point will be, but I would be absolutely shocked if there wasn't something similar to Frontier for Arena. Yeah. Maybe they'll call it Wild. <laughs> <laughs> the chad usmc any chance we get a color filter on the website for metadex commander and brawl specifically uh yeah that seems reasonable <laughs> mint black lotus if unbanned jace isn't broken can i have ponder back Ugh. no it makes storm yeah. good <laughs> yeah i think that's the big the bigger problem if i have ponder back can i have uh preordained Get probe. Yeah. So many good blue Ugh. cards not available. All right. N Lewin42. Any plans for a budget upgrade for the Challenger decks? Maybe how to best update for $20. Seth, we've been yeah. talking about this for so long. When are we going to do oh. it? <laughs> oh, I know. I don't know if we'll actually have. I don't know. I'm definitely planning on doing something. Worst case, probably just like a deck tech style video talking about upgrades. Best case, uh, if we figure things out, maybe there'll be gameplay involved. All right. Darkness Azora. I got into Arena Beta. I've been playing it a bunch and loving it. One thing that's missing is chat. Do you think that's a necessary feature? I don't think Wizards is going to have chat. I think maybe they'll do more with some emotes or like Hearthstone style stuff where you can 
say a few specific annoying phrases until your opponent <laughs> mutes you because you're driving them insane. But I don't think they want chat because then you open up a lot of moderation and reporting and toxicity and all that stuff. You constantly see people posting like, oh, my opponent said this to me on Moto. So I think Wizards just wants to avoid those headaches with Arena. I really wish those emotes that they have, like you, you can like say like six default things. I wish there was more flavor and flair to them. I, I wish it was like dies to Doomblade or something. Or, oh, that's, you know, like nice top deck. Or we'll scoop them up or something. You know, like, I don't know anything. It's just like, hello, it, good game. <laughs> like, it's like very well, generic. Well, Wizards, if you would like to use some of my phrases <laughs> from various videos for Arena, hit me up. I'm open to it. <laughs> It's just like evolving wilds. Like what? Why, why is that even an evo, <laughs> wizards? <laughs> uh, last question. What epic pug can mod- modern artifact decks like Affinity or KCI revamp themselves to accommodate Mox Amber? Mm, no, I don't think so. I don't know how those decks would get a colored legendary creature or planeswalker on the battlefield. So. Maybe there's another style of deck that can do it, but I can't imagine either of those decks being able to play enough things to turn on Mox Amber to make it work. Apparently, Mox Amber's pre-selling for like 25 bucks. People people are believing in this card, which I don't see any upside to. I'd rather just play Simeon Spirit Guide. I think I think that gets, <laughs> that gets me where I want much faster when we're talking so- about modern. <laughs> Did you see, like, a couple of weeks ago, uh, people bought out Leyline of Singularity, which makes all... <laughs> which makes all... What does this Leyline do? <laughs> all non-land permanents are legendary, <laughs> so you play that for free on on turn zero, then your Mox Amber's at tap for blue right away. <laughs> oh, it even taps for blue? Yeah, because it'll make itself legendary. <laughs> so you'll have a legendary blue ley line. But that doesn't even work, because it's creatures or planeswalkers. Oh, you're right. Well, then you still got to play a creature. Oh. Man, and that's even worse <laughs> than I thought. <laughs> uh, no more. Uh, Mox Amber is going to be like the best card in standard. I know it. <laughs> I, I just know it. <laughs> yeah, that and Jaya Ballard. <laughs> <laughs> Wouldn't that be a thing? <laughs> All right, that's all our fish mail questions. Thank you for to everyone who sent them in. If you want to ask your questions in the future, send them to at MTG Goldfish with the hashtag MTG Fish Mail. Oh, wow. Well, thank you. Yes, thank you for sending in. And I think that brings us to the end of episode 166 of the MTG Goldfish podcast. So, Richard, thanks for hanging out. It's always fun. Yeah, always fun, Seth. And thanks to everyone for listening. So we will be back next week with more Dominaria talk. So until then, this is the crew signing out.